Hi everyone and welcome to Shavlik Patch. My name is Joe Andert and I'm a technical communicator with Shavlik. In this video I'll tell you what you need to know about re-signing your updates. So let's get started. The scenario I'm going to present to you today is a common issue that every administrator will face at some point and that's how to deal with updates that have been signed by an expiring certificate. In preparation for this demo, I've already created a new signing certificate to replace the expiring certificate. I've distributed the new certificate to my site servers and clients, but I have not yet imported it to the Council. Creating a new certificate, however, is only part of the solution. The real question is, what do I do with my previously published third-party updates that were signed with the old certificate? The answer is that I will need to re-sign those updates and then make sure that the newly signed packages are redistributed to my distribution points. Let me show you how that's done. Let's assume that the most recently published updates are the ones that became available during the last Patch Tuesday and that a software update group was used to manage and deploy those updates. I will start in the Published Third-Party Updates workspace and I will locate those recently published updates by using the Created Date column to sort the grid. In this case, there are 13 updates that I want to re-sign. If I select one of the updates and look in the bottom pane, I can find the location on the WSUS server of the CAB file that contains this published update. Let's use Windows Explorer to quickly go to this location on the WSUS server and check the certificate it was signed with. In this case, I can see that the serial number begins with 5842. Let's remember those four digits and go back to Shavlik Patch. I mentioned in the intro that I had not yet imported the new certificate. So let's go do that using the Settings dialog. The WSUS Server tab shows the current certificate, which in our scenario is the one that is about to expire. And sure enough, the serial number begins with 5842, which matches the certificate that was used to publish the update that we looked at earlier. To import the new signing certificate, simply click Import and then Locate and Open the new certificate. For security purposes, you will be asked to provide the password for the certificate. Before importing the certificate, Shavlik Patch provides a reminder that you will need to distribute the new certificate to all of your clients. It also reminds you of the other certificate requirements for successfully deploying updates. With the new certificate now imported, let's take a quick look at the new serial number. This number begins with 418A rather than 5842, so that is a good indication that we are using our new certificate. We are now ready to re-sign our updates. To do that, I will simply select the updates and then click Resign. A status message will tell us that the re-signing process has started and that we can track the progress using the autopublish.log file. Let's open that file and follow along as our 13 updates are re-signed. With the re-sign process now complete, I am ready to go back to Shavlik Patch and initiate a synchronization. It is important that a synchronization is performed before we move on to the next step in order to ensure that we are working with the re-signed updates and not the original updates.
The synchronization may take a few minutes to complete. If you want to monitor it, you can do so using the Monitoring Workspace in Configuration Manager. Here I can see that the synchronization process has been started. If I wait a bit and then do a refresh, we'll see that the synchronization has completed. Let's go back to the Publish Third-Party Updates workspace within Shavlik Patch. Whenever you re-sign an update and perform a synchronization, the revision number for the update will be incremented by 1. In this case, the revision numbers for our 13 updates have gone from 1 to 2. Let's take a look at the details for the same Adobe Acrobat update that we examined earlier and see what's changed. Specifically, I can see that the location of the CAV file that contains this published update is different. Let's once again use Windows Explorer to quickly go to this location on our WSUS server and check the serial number of the certificate that the update was signed with. And, sure enough, the serial number begins with 418A, which, if you recall, matches the serial number of the new certificate that we imported earlier in this demo. This verifies that the update has indeed been signed with our new signing certificate. And that's great, but there's still one problem. The updates that were previously published with the old certificate have very likely been deployed and copied to my distribution points. This means that I need to modify the deployment packages so that they contain the updates that were signed with the new certificate. Here's how to do that. First, locate the deployment package. Next, select all of the updates and delete them from the package. On the confirmation dialog, be sure to clear this checkbox. We do not want to refresh the distribution points because we are going to put the updates right back. With that done, we now want to locate the update group and download the newly signed updates back to the deployment package. I can verify that I have everything correct by clicking Summary and then reviewing the details. Everything looks good, so I can click Next and watch the progress of the downloads. With the download process complete, Let's close this dialog and verify that the re-signed updates are back in the deployment package. And sure enough, everything is back in place. Configuration Manager will detect that the deployment package has been modified and will redistribute it to the distribution points. For more information about Shavlik Patch, go to the web URL shown here. These two web pages contain additional video tutorials as well as a number of Shavlik Patch user guides. Thanks for watching.